Hello and welcome to Pyramid Preview. During the next five minutes, I will share some of the key findings from our recently published report, Location-Based Services, Market Forecast 2011 to 2015. We undertook the research over the last few months, which included telephone and face-to-face -face discussions with market participants across the value chain, analysis of different offers in the market, company reports, industry analyst sites, and other background research. We also built a spreadsheet-based model using Pyramid's mobile devices and data forecasts. The key questions the report addresses are, how is the location-based services market developing and what are the key growth segments? How can operators capitalize on the opportunity and what is their positioning in the value chain? What are the different business models finding success in the market? And what are the regional differences in terms of market size and development? We have segmented the market into, into three different elements, so advertising, people finding, and navigation. Um, the report covers only the consumer market, so we are excluding the business market, um, so services such as telematics and vehicle tracking and, and, and those kinds of uh, services, so it's really looking at the consumer market only. Um, and um, and we, so we estimate that the market um, was worth some 2.9 billion in 2010, um, and we forecast very strong growth through to 2015 when um, when we expect it to be worth 10.4 billion. Um, and you can see that um, while currently it is, is navigation applications which are generating um, the, the most significant revenues. Um, it is really advertising, location-based advertising, which will, will which will be driving revenues um, going forward, um, and also people finding services, um, something which has, has found limited success to date. We have found significant growth happening, particularly in the U.S., um, and we expect that to um, to continue to grow through to 2015. New business models are driving adoption of smartphone navigation. This graph shows the usage of navigation um, penetration by the um, number of commercial cars globally, so that actually the penetration of, of the use of navigation um, in all commercial cars. Um, and it's, it's a very clear trend that we're seeing from, um, from personal navigation devices, so, so the, the dedicated devices that, um, that have been very, very popular over the last few years um, from the likes of TomTom and Garmin. Um, we see those sales really flattening out because of um, the, the, the strong value proposition of, of using navigation on a smartphone. Um, and also, increasingly, these, uh, these navigation applications on smartphones are becoming um, lower and lower cost and even free <coughs> and being sponsored by, uh, by advertising revenue. And of course, it is it's very much Google uh, driving that, but, um, but it is a very competitive space. Uh, we see uh, operators preloading their own branded navigation applications, um, the device vendors as well, of course all the platform vendors, a lot of the platform vendors are very focused on this space, um, as well as other companies, startups, as well as um, local advertising companies, particularly companies such as Yellow Pages which are seeing their revenues threatened, so they are also reacting by, by moving into this market um, and in some cases also partnering with, with other elements of the value chain. So it's a very strong growth um, and a very dynamic market segment. In terms of the people finding segment, um, it is child finder services that are most successful and what's, what's, what's really finding a lot of success is when mobile operators are bundling a child finder service within a, a multi-SIM subscription. Um, and this is this is very much driven by the U.S. market, where GPS penetration is already very very high, um, and, and in particular some of the big operators, particularly Sprint, um, AT&T, Verizon, um, are finding strong success in, in terms of bundling these services with um, with these family bundles and charging perhaps five to ten dollars a month um, to provide these services. Um, and, and in addition, they're also actually adding additional services on top of that. Um, so in particular, um, safer driving services for, for teenagers, for instance, so, so the, the phone is no longer able to text um, when, it, when it senses that it's in a car, for instance. Um, and
and it is the two the two different value chains which have um, which have both been tried over the last few years, but it's really the single operator value chain that is that is finding success, and this cross network value chain um, is is very difficult uh, to to get right, in particular because it is not the operator which which markets it. It is a it has to go through an aggregator, and then the, the developer, the service provider, actually has to to bring it to market, and that is it's very difficult for to do. Um, uh, and so we see that, as I said, very much happening in the U.S., but also that success is, is spreading to other regions. Um, and we've we've heard, although there is some resistance still in Europe, we've heard of some operators um, beginning to implement that in, in Europe and, and as I say, other regions as well. In terms of the advertising segment, um, we've we split that into three different sub-segments, so messaging, display, and search. And it's clear from the graph that it is really local search, which is the big, the big growth driver. And again, that is, that comes back to the, the growth in navigation. So instead of charging for navigation applications, um, they are being increasingly provided at, um, at no charge, and then being, uh, are being sponsored by, by things like local search and, and other advertising means. Um, the messaging on the messaging side that is very much <clears throat> based on opt-in services, um, which are finding some success in, in some regions, um, delivering things like coupons and, and other such offers. Um, display also very strong growth we're seeing there, and that's very much within location-based services applications and websites. Um, and, but, that, but it's really, as I said, search, which is the big the big growth segment. Um, and um, yeah, the, the local search and, 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 and the, the strong focus there on navigation applications. Just finally, from a from a regional perspective, um, this graph shows the penetration of GPS um, by subscriber in the different regions, um, and it really highlights that North America the the very high penetration of GPS, um, which has of course been driven by regulatory aspects um, requiring uh, emergency calls to be to be lo- able to be located from mobiles um, and uh, particularly the CDMA operators initially choosing GPS technology and so pretty much every device that they currently sell has GPS capability. Um, so we're predicting that by 2015 you know pretty much all subscribers in North America will have a GPS enabled device. Um, and, and Europe also growing very strongly, um, that, and that means at a global level we're predicting that um, by 2015, roughly a third of all subscribers um, will have a GPS-enabled device. So thank you very much for your time. I hope it has been of interest and of value, and of course don't hesitate to contact me for any further details. Thank you. Goodbye.